This is Gary Hines of the three-time Grammy Award-winning Sounds of Blackness. Please stand by for Season 8 of Let's Talk to the Lord, Gospel Radio Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Lord, you are an awesome God. You're the great Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh. My provider. God is. When I think of his goodness and all that he's done for me, I can't help but call him awesome. I can't help but call him
grace, blessings, and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Jesus the Christ. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of Omega International Prophetic Ministries, Thank you for tuning in for Season 8 and the new beginnings of Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. And Kingdom, our guest for Season 8 of Let's Talk to the Lord is gospel recording artist Tammy Terrell. Tammy Terrell, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here today. Hey, man, Sister Tammy, please share with the kingdom more about you. Who is Tammy Terrell? Tammy Terrell is, number one, a pretty kid. I was, I grew up, uh, my family, uh, my father was a pastor, my mom was a, she called herself with the Davis because she didn't believe in titles, but I uh, grew up a PK and, um, all I know is most of what I know in my early days was uh, the Lord, and um, my mother was um, fanatical about teaching us who God was, and um, we learned a relationship, um, having a relationship with God through her and her testimony. So while my father was pastoring, my mama was at home teaching her kids the way. Amen. And Sister Tammy, please share your testimony of repentance and a little of your journey to relationship with our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Well, as I said before, um, my parents were pastors, and, you know, through them, of course, you know, you're supposed to raise up a child the way he should go. And um, just a short testimony, my mother knew all three of her children, um, God told her, what our gifts would be. Each and every one of us had a special gift. And when it came to me, um, the gift of music, God told her, was in me, was in me. So that was always significant. And um, I knew at the age of five that I had a voice. At five years old, I knew that I was supposed to do something great with that voice. And um, just getting back to a relationship, my mother would always sit us down every Saturday, make us cut, cut the TV off, and we would have a family Bible class, me, her, and my brother. And we would, um, she had a command on her for her to teach us a relationship, or how to have a relationship with God. God told her, teach them me. And so we would sit down at her feet, and she would, we would read Bible scriptures out of the Bible. And she would give us, she would tell us to interpret each and every one. So that is a major part of the journey. Not only that, um, as far as uh, music is concerned, um, she, they invested in us uh, an organ. We had back then, it was an organ shop at, at Fairlane Mall, if anybody's from Michigan. And they bought us an organ, brought it home, brought us lessons. We had our first organ lessons at the age of six, and from there, the rest is history. And uh, my mother and father started a church when I was about nine, and they told us that we were going to be the musicians, and I was one. And I I remember playing my first solo, yeah. and it's an old stable. Uh, we, are, we have come into this house, and I remember playing that on the piano, and from there, the rest is history. And um, that's how I got started playing the piano. And we were singing and playing in my father's church. We were the first musicians and the only musicians in the church. And who is Tammy Terrell now in the kingdom of God and in the body of Christ? Well, Tammy Terrell now um, been a praise and worship leader for the last 20 years. And um, and through that journey of being a praise and worship leader, come to understand that there are many more gifts. It's just never one. God never endows you with just one gift. There are many things through that one that you think is the one. 
Um, but I'm learning now that I have a message for the body of Christ. I have a message for people, period, the universal um, body of Christ and the world in that uh so that's what I am. I am a natural. I've been in the teaching industry, teaching kids for about 10 years, and I saw through that that there was something there that I knew that I had to have a passion for many different things that God took me through that I was allowed to go through in life. Because whatever I believe, I'm a strong believer that whatever, whatever God is going to allow you to share with people, you got to first be a partaker of the fruit. So I've, I've learned yeah. to partake of many things that were good and bad. Some things we think that are bad, that we think that, mm, God don't want me to share that. No, 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 no. All of it is good. All of There is no bad. Whatever lessons that you think you failed, you have learned because you had to experience that. And somebody out there needs to hear what you have to say. Hey, man. So, Sister Tammy, please announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Okay. Well, the topic today is church trauma. And I want to share this. Um, there are many things going on in social media today that we see. Uh, we see a lot of people falling. The Bible said there will be a great falling away. And there are many things yeah. that are happening and people are finding that they don't seem to find any peace anymore. And I and I and I say that's on both ends. Sometimes people are just you know, they they don't just want to be accountable for what they do, they want to be convicted for what they do, um, by the Spirit of God and then there are situations where the church seems to be failing, um, with giving honor and reverence to the things of God, where people want to come into the house of God and feel that conviction and feel that spirit that is convicting them and correcting them. And um, the Bible says that he has given us, um, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. But we have the spirit of God. So that means if you have the spirit of God, there is some correction going on on the inside of you when you're not right. And so just my a little bit of my personal experience, um, I'd say um, a, there was a big hunk of my life. I was married for about 15 years. I started a family in a church of um, someone that trusted. And uh, through the years, there was some manipulation going on. And I didn't understand it until I was stripped of the things that I loved. And my family looked up and my family was gone. And what I found was that I put more of my trust in this particular pastor than I trusted God because I was waiting for the pastor to confirm what God was telling me. Now, I want to tell you something. That probably should be the way, the way that it should be. Whatever God is telling you, that pastor is praying for your soul. And God is telling you something and you waiting for the pastor to confirm it, you better go back in prayer because sometimes something may not be right. Sometimes God may be telling you to move and it, and it may be time and it may not. But if that pastor is right with God and God is saying move, then God is going to say move, okay? it's going It should even out. But in my case, it did not. And what that taught me was that God said, okay, now, You didn't hear me. You did not follow what I said for you to do, and that was to get your family together. My family was not together, and so I had a separation of my family, but my pastor didn't support me. Uh, Instead of uh, breathing peace, they brought separation, and so that was a devastation to my children. That was a devastation to me. And through that journey, I found God for real. I found him for real. Um, I wouldn't wish divorce on anybody because what God has joined, let no man put asunder. So what I learned was is that your relationship with God better be tight because if not, the enemy is waiting. And what you better know who 
you better have some spiritual discernment. And the spirit of God in you, you better know that you have a relationship, a real relationship, because there's a real yeah. adversary out here. And just like the spirit of God works through people, there's an evil spirit that's working through people. And so yeah. it ain't no mystery. Ain't no close your eyes, see no devil and no red, with no, with no fork, with no tail and no fork. That spirit works through people just like the spirit of God works through people. So the, your discernment needs to be high. And with the word of God and with knowing your relationship, your personal relationship with God. And so by saying that, I learned I was on a different journey after that. And what I learned was is that your relationship with God is special. And you got to know God for yourself. And when you come into the house of God, it is not only just a personal relationship, but it is for you to get that strength, that love. And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together with the brethren so that love can be there, that genuine to keep you going and to get a revelation of the word for your life. Um, But since then, my family, um, even though I'm not married anymore, we are all good friends. My children, we are all still intact. We are all just a family. You know, we're still a family. My children are grown now, and we are together, and we are all, me and their father, we are all together and as a family for those kids. And what I learned was, I'm going to get off top a little bit, and what I learned was that marriage, when you have children, even though you divorce, the the family is a part of your children's story. So even though you're divorcing, those children have their parents, still have you and look to you as their parent as part of their story for the rest of their life. So that's their foundation. So if if it doesn't work out with your marriage, don't forget your children. Your children are still a part of that story, and God will bless that. So um, I'm going to give it back to you, Reverend Rose. Amen. And Kingdom, our topic of discussion for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is church trauma. Kingdom, church trauma, also known as religious trauma, and it is a condition of the heart and the mind. It occurs when during our relationship experience or while in membership or while attending a church on a pretty consistent basis and due to unforeseen circumstances, the enemy succeeds in shifting our Christian experience to a abusive, damaging, dangerous, stressful tricks and attacks of Satan. Church trauma can be the result from lies, gossip, rumors, jealousy, attacks from other members or leaders, personal personal attacks where others and members of the church attack one member, or maybe when a disagreement services, it happens when your focus is taken off of Christ and you turn your church into a social club rather than a place of worshiping God and learning about God. Now, some may disagree, but I want to separate Let's say a a moral act that comes to light to a scandal that can create church hurt, that's true, or from a armed situation that can result in a death from the church hurt from what we are discussing. Now, understand, those events, if they happen, are and can be trauma and hurtful, but For this topic, I am speaking more to cliques and groups in a church that don't know their place, their Bibles, and from the heart, they really don't want God through Christ and are messy people who love to run the mouth and have mess ongoing 24-7. 
kingdom, I have been a victim of church trauma, and I am not talking about betraying one's confidence, but outright lying and nastiness. And if you are or have been a victim, you know it will make you want to lay your salvation down and go off. And if you are not careful, you will become street or hood and be ready to fight and or say (laughs) words out of your mouth that they use in the streets or be violent. Understand this occurs between people and their church or religion as a whole. Spiritual abuse happens when we either don't know the word or how to follow the word of God from fruitless people. Kingdom spiritual abuse is exerting one's power over another or control over someone else's life and can result from a disagreement over anything, including scriptural interpretation. But as I have said, I have been a victim of it, and I am also a overcomer and have been delivered from it. And I am a witness. It can be a long, difficult road to recover from it. In Scripture, Jesus, Yeshua experienced trauma all the way to the cross. It was his religious leaders to whom lied to cover their own exposure and had Jesus arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and brought before Pilate. It was the backslidden church and religious church members that yelled, crucify him. The scribes and the Pharisees who wanted the benefits of serving God, but did not want to live holy or partake in his suffering. Kingdom Matthew, the 21st chapter, the 23rd through the 27th verses, Jesus' authority was challenged by his religious community. In John, the 8th chapter and the 1st through the 11th verses is where a woman was caught in adultery and brought before Jesus. In Luke 20, 20, they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be righteous in order that they may catch him in some kind of statement. Now understand Matthew 18, 15 through 20, Galatians 6 and 1, Luke 17 and 3, Judges 20, 12 through 28, all deal with personal conflicts and sin and how to handle each situation. And as Yeshua, Jesus, elevated to Christ, rose from it, you can rise also. He is our teacher and how to overcome. Ma'am and sir, there is healing after church trauma. Please be guided by the Holy Spirit. And I speak over you to come out from among them and be ye separated says the Lord. There is redemption and there is love after church trauma. Years of hate is not your portion. Toxic church folks is not your portion. I decree there is freedom in relationship with God over religion. There is liberty and freedom in Christ. God is love and wants you to fulfill everything and be everything he called you and anointed you to be. And you are not alone. There is recovery after the trauma. It is not God's will that you be abused by anyone, including in the church. Sister Tammy, please give the final words on our topic of discussion, church trauma. Well, um, I would say that um, God is able to do anything abundantly and above all that we could ask or think. And I believe that, um, you know, these people just need to be healed. You know, you just experience trauma at the hand of the church that's somewhere that you shouldn't have to have your guard up. But unfortunately, but fortunately we are human beings and we need to be mindful. Our spiritual discernment needs to be high everywhere we go. And um, I pray that uh, the reverence for the things and the holy things of the most high and the one true source can be reverenced for the greatness that it 
represent. Amen. Amen and amen again. Sister Tammy Terrell, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. Uh, well, Sister Tammy Terrell is a psalmist and an artist. Featured artist uh, with Dwayne Parham, who's a great saxophonist, and um, he, you can um, listen to the music. I guess this is where I say that. At. I'm not sure, but I'll say it again. Um, Tammy Terrell Davis on Facebook, um, Dwayne Parham on Facebook. Also for booking, Saxville Avenue. Um, dot com and that can also be on Space Expo Avenue on Facebook and the Wayne Parham on Facebook as well. Amen. And please tell the kingdom about the music being featured during this podcast, Your Precious Love and I'm So in Love. Uh Your Precious Love is a uh, cover by Tammy um Terrell and Marvin Gaye. It is a cover done by me and Dwayne Parham, the great saxophonist, Maxwell Avenue, and you are sure to enjoy it. The I'm so in love with you. I'm a featured artist there with Daniel Young, which was done some years ago. But so that you can get a taste again of Tammy Terrell, I am a featured artist on that song as well. And how may the kingdom purchase your music and support your ministry? Okay, now um, you can support Apple Music, uh, Saxville Avenue Records. Um, you can go to Dwayne Parham, um, Saxville. I'm sorry, Dwayne Parham on Facebook, and to purchase Saxville Avenue Records. Saxville hey, Avenue. Amen. And kingdom the and the music of Sister Tammy Terrell is in rotation on Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. Kingdom Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, including the iHeartRadio app on your Roku, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You may download episodes from www.speaker.com. Please don't forget the apostrophe and let's. We are live every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time from KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and at 11 a.m. every Saturday from SensationalSoundsRadio.net. Stream us 24-7 from the Weekend TV. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on X.com at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. International. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phone found under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. You may now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International, and Alexa will play Let's Talk to the Lord gospel radio talk show. Kingdom, let's talk to the Lord is your 24-hour station for talk shows, gospel news, and radio interviews, and Christian music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease, authored by my sister, Kimberly V. Porter. All of my music are available on Amazon and to all digital stores and outlets. Lord, Give Me Another Chance, featuring Sean E. Scales and Tamara Lloyd, is found under Apostle John E. Ross. And Remember Now by Creator, featuring King David the Vessel, A New Duel and Doctrine, is also listed under Minister John E. Ross. You can now listen to our radio station on your Roku. We're found under your My Tuner application on your Roku. Then you can search us out by Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. And please get ready and search out our new EP. Awesome God is available in all digital platforms. Please be on the lookout for that. And Kingdom Un. 
Till next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Yeshua Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. Amen.